Hi there. Brian here from Directus. Today, I am back answering a question from a Directus community member. We're going to walk through it and see if we can't tackle this together. So, uh, apologies in advance. Franck, I am going to probably mispronounce your last name, but please don't be mad at me. Friend of Directus and community member Franck Couferrier writes, Hello, Bryant. First of all, thank you for the recent videos posted on the Directus YouTube channel, especially those related to the Insights feature. You are very welcome, Franck. I am a relatively new user since the beginning of March of the SaaS version of Directus for a project I am working on. I have started to set up dashboards with the help of Insights, but I am wondering about the best way to do it for my needs. My first dashboard is about the users of the service. I would like to display the total number of users, the number of active users, users who have logged in and users who have edited at least one item, and the number of new users over the current month, and draw a graph that shows the evolution over time. How would you do it? Frank, I love this question. I appreciate you writing. Let's dive in, but before we do that, I'm just gonna slide over here to the right and use Figma here to make sure I understand what we're doing. We are displaying the total number of users. To me, that sounds like our metric panel. We're going to display the total number of active users and they have a certain criteria. Let's map out that criteria. So that is they've logged in at least once, edited at least one item. And last but not least, we're going to display the number of new users over time. All right, so to me, that is gonna be three panels in our dashboard, two metric panels and a time series. So let's flip over to direct us and see what we've got. Perfect, here is my demo instance. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our insights module. We'll create a new dashboard and Franck, this dashboard's for you. Excellent. So now we will edit our panels. We're going to create a new panel and adding a metric panel couldn't be easier. I just click on the metric panel. I'm gonna choose the collection. In this case, I'm gonna search for directus users, choose that. For our field, this is gonna be the, the value field that we're choosing. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna count the number of users, so I'm gonna choose the ID because I know that is uh, unique for each user. Now, I could add some filters on this, but we're just tracking the total number of users, so it's not necessary. I'll scroll down to the bottom to our panel header, and we'll just call this the total number of users. All right, uh, we'll search for the users icon, and let's add a color just to give it a little bit of flavor. We click done, it loads our panel onto the dashboard, and now we can see that we have six total users. So next is the number of active users. Now what I could do is quickly clone this one just by going to the little action buttons there and duplicating this, and I'm going to edit it. We're still gonna count the number of directus users, but maybe we wanna add a filter. So let's just change the total active users and maybe we make this purple, the directus purple. So we'll scroll back up. Directus does track the login and the last page. So I could go in and add a filter for uh, last access. Now, <clears throat> What I can do is use a dynamic variable to make sure this is like the last month or so. Uh, so I want to be greater than or equal to, let's say our threshold for active users here would be like monthly active users. So what I'm gonna do, I'm using Raycast here. We've got a really nice Directus documentation plugin for Raycast, but I'm just gonna search for dynamic variables. So, 
Inside our documentation, you can see the dynamic variables that are available, uh, like current user, current role, now, and now adjustment. Uh, that is the one that I am looking for. So now adjustment, where are you? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Dynamic variables. Where are you? Dynamic variables. Is that under the API reference and filter rules? There we go. Okay, so now uh, under the dynamic variables section, I can see I've got the current timestamp plus or minus a given distance. So maybe I wanna do now minus, um, we'll do one month. So I'm gonna hop back to Frank's dashboard. Whoops, we're gonna go back and edit. And for our filter here, we are going to do last access is greater than or equal to now minus one month. And we will look and see how many users have last accessed the system in less than one month ago. And that comes back with a single user. But don't forget, we've also got the condition that they have to have edited at least one item. Uh, so there's lots of different ways we could potentially do that. Um, you know, I could go in and set a, a, a flag on the user, like if I wanted to. Um, so we could go in and say, hey, add a new field to the direct as users and say, hey, have they edited one item? Um, that's a little messy. And maybe I want to track other user events. So what I would do, if it were me in this situation, I would go in and create a new collection. Let's just call it events. Now, what we're going to do, we will use the created on. I'm just going to call this timestamp just so we're super clear. And created by, I'm just going to say user. Next, we will add one more field to this. Actually, we may add a couple. Uh, we want to track the key. So what is the event? In this case, let's call it items updated. Now we will go in and add a item string. We just want to pick up the ID of the item. And then we probably want to key on the collection as well. So we want to add a field for collection. So now we've got our events. Uh, if I had a front end connected to this frock, like if, I prefer Nuxt. So if I was building with my Nux front end, uh, the user would take an action. I would just fire off an event using the SDK or the REST or GraphQL APIs. But in this case, let's keep it all contained inside Directus and we'll go to our flows. So we're gonna go to our flows and we're gonna say record user events. We'll create a new flow and we're gonna use the event hook trigger. So we'll choose action non-blocking for the type. We'll go into scope and since we want to make sure that users have updated at least one item, we're gonna use items.update. Next, we'll choose the collections we wanna fire this on. So maybe companies, contacts, deals, or projects. Uh, we could choose as many as we want. We will finish the setup. And what I'm gonna do right now, instead of adding this event first, or, or this next operation, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna go into a specific deal and all I'm gonna do is edit this deal. So Watsika, Ryan, and Shulist, the deal value, let's change this to $5,000. All I wanna do is trigger this flow. So I'll go back to it and we've got record user events. I can see the logs for this. So now I could see uh, the options of the trigger. I can see the payload, what the things I was getting back are. And then I could see our accountability. What's the user? and what role do they have, what's their IP, uh, how did they update that? So next, I'm gonna edit this flow. We're gonna go in and add a new operation. So we're just gonna call this create event. All we're gonna do is add a new item to the events collection. We'll just go in, choose the event collection or events in this case, and then we will add our payload. So the key, for the event, let's just call this item, uh, we can use the same one, item.updated or item underscore updated, whatever syntax you prefer. We have the item, that is gonna be coming from our trigger. So we're gonna use dollar sign dot trigger dot keys. And I'm gonna pick up the first one. 
It could be multiple items, but uh, for the sake of this demo, we'll just do that. And then we're also going to pick up the collection from our trigger. Uh, don't forget your quotation marks. And of course, don't forget your quotation marks. And we we'll use dollar sign trigger dot collection. Excellent. We'll make sure that's valid JSON. Directus will tell you if it's not. We will save it. Let's save our flow that records our changes. And now let's go back in and update that deal. We've got our test deal. Let's call it uh, new deal for my man, Frank. Save. And now we go back to our flows. We can see that this flow has ran. We could see our trigger event. Do we see an event? Boom, there's the event. Okay, so now I can see the user, the timestamp, the key. Um, what I could do, I could build a dashboard off of this data if I wanted to. Uh, but I saw that your other question, uh, we want to display the number of new users over time. So let's hop back into Directus. We're going to go to our system collections and I'm going to go to Directus users. One thing you'll notice here is out of the box, we do not load um, like a time created or date created for this. So what you can do, you can go in and create a new field. We'll call it date time as the type field. Uh, and we'll just do date created and under, I'm gonna use the advanced options here and on create, I'm gonna save the current date and time. So whenever a new user is added, that user will, uh, have a field recorded in the database for uh, date created just to verify that now the other thing that i can do here to be able to query this i could go in and do a one to many relationship so i could go in and say events we're going to choose our event table that we created we've got our foreign key which is going to be the user and we will just say uh, let's record the timestamp and the key. Okay. Now, what this will do, it creates the inverse relationship on the user. So if I were to go to my user account, you can see that event that was created a few minutes ago. Now, what can I do with all of this? I'm just gonna save a user created time. What I can do, we'll go back to your dashboard, Frank. Now I can adjust my filter. So we want people that have logged in within the last month. And now you'll see the events here. So I can go in and use the count of events is greater than zero. And that's gonna be a single user, which is just me in this case. All right, so last but not least, we wanna track new users over time. How do we do that? We're going to create another new panel. And for this one, we're gonna choose time series. The collection, again, will be direct us users and the group aggregation that we want. Uh, basically, again, we're just gonna count. Maybe we want to do the uh, precision, like a daily precision. This is how it's gonna group those values together. The date range, you said you want the last month. You could choose that. You can also do automatic based on the data. Or if you want to get really fancy, you can use our global variables to allow you to adjust the date range that you want to show for the dashboard. The value field. Uh, again, we're just going to pick the ID and the date field will be date created. Now, uh, I don't necessarily need to filter this because there are no other filters we want to apply. We'll show a header and that will be new users over time. And I think this is only gonna come up with one user because the rest of the users don't have a date created field. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back in and look at Alex the man here and I'm gonna give him a date created there and see if we can actually get some data out of this. Uh, so there's our user that was created then. Um, so this is exactly how I would do this, Frank. Uh, let me know if you have questions. To our community members, 
If you have questions, please write in to us. I love doing these videos. I love helping our community members. And make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. We'll catch you later.